Are you tired of your current living situation? Sick of annoying neighbors, unpredictable weather, and occasional destruction of property? Or do you want more of those things? You know what the biggest sign of a bad neighborhood is? Broken windows. Well, fret not, you weird masochist you, whichever end of the spectrum you find yourself on. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and today we're going to take a look at 10 of the most iconic neighborhoods in cartoon history and telling you whether they're bearable or terrible. We'll be ranking each of these neighborhoods on a scale of 1 to 5 stars. 5 stars is practically heaven, while 1 star is, well, you know, the other one. And where better to start than the most iconic town in cartoon history, Evergreen Terrace Springfield from The Simpsons. The Simpsons needs no introduction, and honestly, Springfield probably doesn't either. We won't be able to tell you what state it's in, but we can tell you darn near anything else you want to know. Wow. For starters, Springfield is usually a friendly place. At the very least, there's a sense of community insofar as the town's willingness to come together when it matters most. Like when all the residents joined together to rebuild Ned Flanders' house, practically all of Springfield was offering to help when it was destroyed by a hurricane. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you end up on Evergreen Terrace, you'll find yourself on Flanders Turf, and given just how generous and graceful of a duty is, you'll have just about the best neighbor you can ask for. You might also find yourself on the wrong end of Homer shenanigans, though, but it'll all be resolved by the end of the episode, so don't sweat it too much. Unfortunately, living in Springfield has its flaws. Pollution is intense. Well, sir, where should we dump this batch? The playground? Thanks to the power plant owner, Mr. Burns' less than environmentally friendly business practices. In fact, pretty much everyone in a position of power is either totally corrupt, like Mayor Quimby or Mr. Burns, or just flat out incompetent, like Police Chief Wiggum. I'm looking for my friend Bill. As long as you keep to yourself, you should be all right. But don't be surprised at the occasional disaster, be it economic or otherwise. It's not raining, so we're just homeless. We're giving Evergreen Terrace three stars. It's a middle-of-the-road entry, and therefore a pretty good one to start with. Springfield isn't the only satirical town we'll be visiting today. Next, we're going to Whitecrest. I mean, Woodcrest, Baltimore from the Boondocks. On the outside, Woodcrest looks like a great place to live. I mean, just look at these houses. Most of us can even dream of affording them, sure, but they're really nice. And so are some of the neighbors. Tom Dubois is a trustworthy neighborhood lawyer, and local celebrity Thugnificent makes up for his loud parties with his surprising hospitality, and the fact that he's okay with literally just throwing money for the neighbors to enjoy. But for every good neighbor, there's another who likes to cause a ruckus. You drive like an old bitch. No relation. Of course, good old Uncle Ruckus is the best example. And while he is a hilarious character, <laughs> having a guy around who regularly threatens to lynch the black kids of the neighborhood isn't exactly the best for a property value. Neither is the Wunkler family, complete with insane domestic terrorists and a rich father who regularly buys them out of any trouble they get into. That said, while Woodcrest has some unsavory individuals, you might actually be able to make a decent life for yourself if you keep your distance. We have to give Woodcrest only two and a half stars for its chaotic nature, though credit is due for the friendlier faces and the beautiful scenery. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking of hiring Riley to paint my house. Those graffiti skills are amazing. Don't you wish you can go to a more predictable place? Well, your wish may be granted. Next up, we're going to Dimsdale, California from the Fairly Odd Parents. Dimsdale's an average place that most people can understand. Through the eyes of Timmy Turner, it may look like a playground where any manner of wishes can be granted. In anyone else's eyes, it's just your average, everyday town, even if it does have a few unsavory characters. The most you have to worry about if you live in Dimsdale is the often reckless wishing of Timmy Turner. So why don't you wish for exactly what you want and we'll do our best? This can be anything from him wishing to be in a video game or a comic book, which won't affect you, obviously, or it can be as reckless as wishing that all the town's Halloween costumes came to life. Thankfully, his misguided wishes are always pretty quickly fixed. There's no way it could get worse, right? The only other thing we could take points off of Dimsdale's record for is the fact that it's home to the most infamously monstrous creature of all time, Dinkleberg. Dinkleberg. But if you can tolerate the occasional reckless wish, you would only need to take this monster into consideration, which is why we're giving Dimsdale a solid three and a half out of five stars. And all this talk of magic might make you long for a simpler time. Well, maybe not as simple as Bedrock and the Flintstones, but it's worth looking at anyway, right? Now, we know what you're thinking. What could possibly make someone in our modern age want to live in the prehistoric era? 
Well, for all you minimalists out there, this place has a lot of benefits. The houses are made of simple stone, making them not only easy on the eyes, but also not super prone to fires. For those of you craving a more exciting life, we got you covered too. Somehow Bedrock has radio stations. I'll turn on the radio. TV and even cars. I mean, sure, you just run with the car shell around you, but that means you don't need to pay for gas. Economically speaking, it's one of the best places to live. We can't see why you couldn't just choose a rock you like, make a nice home out of it, maybe find a friendly pet dinosaur too. It might not be the most modernized town out there, but for its time, Bedrock is pretty darn impressive. It's gonna rock a solid four stars from us. Could it be the best of the day? For those of you wanting a more modernized way of life, Push the button! we know a show that's an expert on the concept. Next is O Town from Rocco's Modern Life. This place, man, this place is weird. It might just be because this is the first area we're talking about that's populated by animals instead of people, but the point stands. O-Town is fittingly named, cause you'll be saying, oh, a lot when you get here. Everything about it is essentially a facet of modern life, exaggerated to 11. Anything from grocery shopping to going to the laundromat to even trying to fix your toilet could go from an everyday task to an absolute train wreck. Seriously, poor Rocco gets bodied constantly in the show, for like no reason. We were gonna dedicate a whole section to Ed Bighead, but as much of a jerk as he is, he still manages to be one of the least dangerous parts of O-Town. It's a shame because most of the regulars are pretty nice. Rocco, Heifer, Philbert, Spunky, there's no shortage of perfectly nice people. Even really, really big man is protecting citizens. It's just a shame that everything from a vacuum cleaner to a washing machine will try to bludgeon you on a daily basis. There's also the big head's dog, Earl, a creature who would make Michael Myers shudder in sheer terror. For us humans, O-Town has to get a two-star rating. This place is way too dangerous for a mere human, but you may be okay if your luck is even a little bit less terrible than Rocco's. Let's go down to South Park, Colorado for our next entry. Alright, you know what show this one is from. If Springfield was a place noted for weird occurrences, incompetent adults, and overall corruption, South Park is that, but on steroids. I am the strongest woman this state has ever seen! First, it is frigid. Wait, look, we can handle a little bit of snow, but when it's there every day, you're gonna have a bad time. It gets kind of ridiculous. The kids are by far the most reasonable, responsible people therein. And when one of those kids is Eric Cartman, you're still gonna really want to keep your distance. No, you can't work from home at the hot dog stand. Tack on the weird supernatural occurrences, and we have ourselves another two-star neighborhood. But hey, you can at least get snow cones anytime you want, right? It's time to go even further south. We're talking down, down, down to the bottom of the sea. To Con Street Bikini Bottom from SpongeBob SquarePants. For starters, economically, this has to be the best place on the list. Think about it. We've seen on multiple occasions that Mr. Krabs pays SpongeBob in quarters. Wow, that's more than I make in a year. And that he charges him even more just to work there. Here you go, Mr. K. Yet SpongeBob has full ownership of a fully furnished two-story home with a gigantic library in his basement and enough to constantly keep food on the table for both himself and his pet snail Gary. Even being broke, SpongeBob and Squidward are able to live decently comfortable lives. So imagine being able to come here with good pay. <laughs> you would be loaded. But how to do that, exactly? Bikini Bottom is underwater, right? Well, the answer is simple. Sandy Cheeks. Apparently, she lives underwater just for the heck of it, and is funded by her bosses who pay her to come up with clever inventions. Being that she's a genius and a nice person, if you get in contact with Sandy, you probably have the door open to your undersea living possibilities. There's a variety of restaurants. Not only is there the Krusty Krab, but there's even a fancy diner, and no shortage of fashionable homes and friendly people. You've got workout buffs, musically gifted people, and fun-loving kids at heart. The worst you'd have to worry about in Bikini Bottom are some irksome neighbors, which really depends on the kind of people you want to hang around. And okay, there was that one time Plankton enslaved the entire town, but he's been smart enough not to try that since he got trampled. There's also the occasional slapstick that you might fall victim to, but with how spacious Bikini Bottom looks to be, you should be able to find your own space. Surprisingly, Bikini Bottom holds up pretty darn well. We're giving it 4.5 stars out of 5. 
Oh, but if you live on Con Street, you might want to bring lots of ibuprofen. If you thought Bikini Bottom was strange, wait until you visit Elmore from the amazing world of Gumball. Oh yeah, it looks normal from the outside, but just you wait. This place has all kinds of wild individuals. There's cats, bunnies, fish with legs, balloons, ice cream cones, puppets, and more. All completely sentient, mind you. Every other week, one of the larger residents will probably be going on some sort of rampage, which definitely leads to the occasional property damage or injury. As for quality of life, though, you'll have everything you need here. That is, unless Larry isn't available. This guy does just about every job you can imagine. The guy who does every job in this town! So when he decided to go on strike due to the residents' poor treatment of him, you're kinda screwed. People in Elmore are usually friendly, but there's a lot of chaos, albeit to varying degrees. We'll give Elmore a solid two and a half out of five stars. It's unpredictable, but nowhere near as lethal as somewhere like O-Town. But there's one neighborhood that you've been waiting for. Since we open with Springfield, it's only fair to talk about the other giant in adult animation. That's right, it's time to talk about Stool Bend, Virginia from The Cleveland Show. You'll find Stool Bend a nice place to live. You'll find old friends like Cleveland and new friends like, uh, the short dude? Holt Richter reporting for duty. And the racist white guy with the wife who rides on one of those mobile shopping carts. And, uh, there's even a bear. Uh, um, I'm a bear. I can kill you! That said, since Cleveland is back in Quahog now, there's not really much reason to move here. We'll give it a simple rating of three stars, which is two more than its ratings gave it. Wait, don't you have a show to do? Oh, that's right. But jokes aside, for the grand finale, we've got to talk about Spooner Street Quahog from Family Guy. Well, let's start with the good news. The town is protected by neighborhood cop Joe Swanson, and there's some friendly neighbors around, like Cleveland Brown, and... Uh, oh, okay, now on to the bad. We've talked about unsavory neighbors and authority figures, but Quahog takes it to a whole nother level. On Spooner Street alone, yeah, Peter, whose shenanigans regularly result in complete disasters for the people around him. It's anything from destroying Cleveland's roof bi-monthly to blowing up a children's hospital. He's too dangerous to live near. Quagmire is also a problem, being that he habitually stalks, kidnaps, and assaults women, and despite his friend being a cop, seemingly nothing is done about it. Then there's Herbert, who I don't think we need to explain why he is a problem. Honestly, as fun as the show is, I can't think of any reason you want to live here. Your house is going to get destroyed a lot. Women and children are almost perpetually unsafe. And can we talk about how a concerning portion of the women in Quahog have slept with Brian, a dog? And we haven't even mentioned Stewie, who's scheming to take over the world and has killed people for no reason. Quahog gets zero stars. Look, I'll gladly take the O-Town washing machine rampage over whatever the heck Peter's planning this week. 